Hello. Uh, last week we talked about uh, the, in my opinion, most uh, underrated Beatles solo albums. Um, one album by each Beatle. Um, you can watch the video, I'm not going to spoil it for you, which albums I've picked. Uh, this week um, I'm going to do my first slightly negative, let's see, <laughs> video on the Beatles because it's the, as you may be able to tell, the most uh, overrated Beatles solo albums. Um, and last week uh, I started with Ringo, then George, then Paul and John, and this week I will make it the other way around. So we start with the, in my opinion, most overrated John Lennon album. And, you know, as a disclaimer, last week I said when I talked about albums being underrated, that doesn't necessarily mean that I think those were great albums, just in the context of their oeuvre. Um, I, I think they are underrated, but it doesn't mean that Gone Tropical is a masterpiece. And this week, um, it's the other way around. When I say something is overrated, it doesn't mean that I think it's a bad album. It's just not, you know, I don't think it's as good as some people may think. John Lennon, um, Walls and Bridges, 1974. You know, usually, not usually, but very often when you watch uh, John Lennon solo album ranking videos or li read lists on the internet, um, this is often at least the third favorite, the, the, the third highest ranked album. You know, there's a kind of a consensus that I'd imagine is number one and Plastic Ono Band is number two, or Plastic Ono Band is number one and Imagine is number two. And this is usually the number three album. I think in my very first video on this channel, the top 40 Beatles solo albums, it was like around number 30. Um, and I think at least four, I had at least four, if not five, John Lennon albums um, that I think are better than this album. For example, I think that uh, Sometime in New York City, uh, I prefer Sometime in New York City much to this album. Most people don't like Sometime in New York City. I prefer Double Fantasy to it. Um, so it's you know, it's a bit better than Mind Games, the album Mind Games. The song Mind Games is one of my favorite, all-time favorite songs by anyone, but the album Mind Games is, to me, probably the weakest John Lennon album that he released during his lifetime, if you don't count Rock and Roll, which is a cover album. Um, I think Wars and Bridges is better than the Mind Games album. But, you know, most people have a soft spot for this album because it was a kind of a comeback. Uh, first of all, it was during his last week and he was he was split up with, with Yoko so he hung around his old rock and roll mates like you know he spent a lot of time with people like Paul McCartney for example, Ringo Starr, Keith Moon, Mick Jagger, David Bowie, um, who else, Harry Nielsen of course so it's, it was a bit of a party period for him which I you know I should like because I was never a big fan of as I said in my previous video, like pl Plastic Ono Band, when he's the, the serious, angry artist, um, the artist in pain. It's not my favorite John Lennon. I like the more loose, the more humorous, you know, um, John Lennon, and I like him to up tempo songs. And there are a couple of up tempo songs on this album, and I do like those. You know, Whatever Gets You Through the Night was his only number one single in America during his lifetime, and it's a great. Elton John, that's another one of the people he hang, uh, did hang out with at the time, and, and Whatever Gets You Through the Night is a song he did with Elton. And um, that's a great song, Number Nine Dream is a great song, What You Got is a great song, so there are great songs. Like I said, that I think it's overrated doesn't mean I don't think it's a good record, but I think there are some fillers on the album, especially at the end, you know, Beef Jerky, the Yaya cover version with Julian Lennon on drums, and some of the ballads, you know, the I'm I'm I'm, I'm separated from Yoko and I'm I'm sad kind of songs. Um, I don't like those too much. Bless you, scared. They're a bit. That's the John Lennon I don't like. The 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 world is so. Is, is the world isn't fair to me? That kind of John Lennon, the millionaire who is always complaining about everything, although it's his own fault, you know. The separation from Yoko was pretty much. <laughs> 
he had to blame him for that in a way and he did have a lot lots of fun in this time many people said so i think it's it's an okay record but it's overrated um the next one might be even more controversial you know this was pretty controversial i think <laughs> the next one is a uh, flaming pie by paul mccartney and i I really liked that album in my top 40 Beatles solo albums ranking video. It was, I think, number 13. You know, from there are like 70 or 80 Beatles solo albums. I ranked my top 40. And I said at the beginning of that video that if from number 40 onwards, I like all those albums. Um, and this is 13. So it must be like my sixth or seventh favorite Paul McCartney album. And it's a great album. But I think it's overrated. Especially if you watch the previous video with the underrated albums compared to what he did after that with Driving Rain, which was, you know, which everyone hated and this everyone loved. Off the ground, the album he did before that also wasn't really liked by most people. I don't think, you know, I'm such a big Paul McCartney fan that I disagree that this was a short return to form. In my opinion, every base, most of the things he did in the past 30 four years or whenever Flowers in the Dirt, 1989, um, it, it's a great, it's a great, a very long, great phase in his career. So this isn't like a positive outlier to me. This is just another great album he made. <laughs> but people seem to think this is one, many people think this is one of his four or five best solo albums, you know, without Wings, probably for too many people, his best solo album without Wings. I don't feel like that. I think it's a bit an album that plays it safe. Um, you know, there are two albums before, Off the Ground and Flowers in the Dirt, often get accused of being like adult-oriented repertoire, middle of the road, not much left field stuff in it. This is as well, but also we've added some Beatles sounds, and 60s Beatles sounds, and the Beatles had a huge comeback at that time with the anthology series, so I think he was a bit playing it safe and you know and uh, I think the the up tempo songs there are, there are only a few up tempo songs on that album and they don't they don't really work you know it's a 14 track album maybe if you would have like with Chaos and Creation made a 10 track album which focuses more on the introspective songs would have been a much better album and you think and I think the songs we were singing is one of his lamest openers ever the song it says it only it, it lasts Three minutes, fifty-four seconds. To me, it always seems feels it drags on. Like, like I always thought it's a five or six-minute song. The chorus is, you know, it's not a very good chorus to start an album off with. But you know, of course, there are lots of classics on that album. I really like most Paul McCartney fans. I, I think songs like "Some Days," "Calico Skies," "Little Willow," "For Marine Starkey," "Beautiful Night." Great Day, an old Wings song from the early 70s. All great songs, uh, even like Young Boy. And have I mentioned Little, yeah, I've mentioned Little Willow. And I even like Really Love You. Many people despise Really Love You. I think it's great. It's the only McCartney, Starkey, shared composition ever. So alone for that, it's, it's you know, it's, some, it's, 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 it's iconic for that reason that it's a collaboration between him and Ringo. Um, but it's, you know, I don't mind it that it's very repetitive, it's, it's a nice rock song. And the others, you know, the ballads, I've just mentioned all, you know, 10 out of 10 ballads. So it's a great album, but to some people, I think some people slightly overrated. And again, this is <laughs> this is by, by far my most, or my, my first controversial video ever, because, you know, many people love this album, George Harrison, Cloud9. This big comeback, 1987, album went to number one in America. The single "Got My Mindset on You" also went to no number one in America. Before that, he wasn't, you know, his, the previous albums didn't really chart or have get good reviews. Uh, one thing that both albums have in common is that Jeff Lynne produced them, and I have to say, although as you can see by now, I'm not, I don't seem to be the biggest Jeff Lynne fan. I have nothing against him, you know, I like some ELO songs and I don't think he's a bad producer all in all, I, f I just think to these albums and to, to Beatles solo music he's not 
the right choice for a producer. I think it's very much of a, it's not a very analog, it's not a very warm sound. It's, and you know, the, be the Beatles and also solo Beatles, it's always about the, the human element. It's, it's, a, it's not very technical music. It's very humane music in a way. And his, his approach is a bit sterile to me and cl clean, yeah. The album itself is good. George is on good form. Some of his best vocal performances are on there. And you can see that he really wanted this album to awful cover, by the way. You know, I, I like, he, he seems happy, that's that's cool. But uh, <laughs> the shirt and that's the, the, the backdrop, it's not very, not very artistic cover, it's very 80s. But yeah, uh, Jeff Lynne production, not too much of a fan of the production on this album, but the songwriting by George is good, the musicianship is good. It's, but it's not that special, you know. In the previous video I talked about Gontropo as my most underrated George album and this is a better album than Gontropo of course it's more focused but Gontropo has you know that, that what I just said Gontropo has a briefs more has more of the the human George the human side of George Harrison in, in the good and, and in a bad way because it's a very lazy album but you know although I think this is a better album in recent years I I think I listened more often to Gone Dropper than to Cloud9. And now, poor Jeff Lynne, most overrated Ringo Starr album in my opinion, Time Takes Time, I think from 1992, well, I want to say 1991, from 1992. So after a 10 year break from recording, uh, come back for Ringo. I don't see a big comeback because this wasn't a commercial success. Um, but it was a kind, a slight critical success. If you ever had a Ringo album that could be said about that it's a critical success next to the Ringo album from 73, this is probably the album that got most praise by critics next to the Ringo album. Um, it's a competent album, but again, this is, this is even more Jeff Linney sounding than this album. Um, good songs. But you know, I don't think that the music here has much to do with what the Beatles stood for or should stand for. Um, maybe it's what Ringo stands for or stood for at that time. But me as a Beatles fan, this is really AOR, this is really middle of the road, very conservative, you know, rock, rock, if you even can call it soft rock for very conservative people, people with a conservative music, tasty music, people who may enjoy Sting records or Phil Collins records. I'm not one of those. <laughs> um, so it's it's very competent, as I said, but it doesn't move me. It, it doesn't have any emotional thing, any emotional depth for me. Bukops of Blues or Road to Gravure, such albums, even Stop and Smelly Roses, they have more, you know, as I said, with the previous Jeff Lynne produced album, they have more human element, more what I feel R Ringo to me, what Ringo <laughs> means to me is more on those albums. Um, but yeah, it was a very competent comeback for Ringo, but unfortunately it also led to all the albums he did after that. You know, think, I think from then on he really started to repeat the same formula and all those albums got worse and worse and worse. This is by far the best album Ringo made since 1992, all the albums after that, they're nice. Some some of the albums are uh, pleasant to listen to, but it's so repetitive. It's always this cheap Beatle nostalgia. You know, every second song is about memories from the 60s and and and, and quoting Beatles references everywhere. So it's it's a bit too much. You know, <laughs> um, yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's all I've got to say. This was probably the first slightly more negative video on, on Beatle content on this channel. You know, first and foremost, this channel will always be uh, me adoring the Beatles. But you know, you have, some, you have to have some balance and this was, I can't love everything. I like all those albums, especially Flaming Pie, as I said, is a top 15 solo albums to me, don't get me wrong. The others I never really loved, but 
I do like them. So, yeah, flaming pa uh, If I have to rank them, like la last week I ranked the four uh, underrated albums. If I have to do a ranking of those albums, I would say Flaming Pie is the best album. Walls and Bridges <coughs> is the second best. No, Cloud Nine and Walls and Bridges are tie, tie number two, and Ringo is number four. Thank you for watching.